are you, Good sir? Good to see you, my friend. It is great to see you, man. It's been a while. Welcome to the den. Welcome to White Lion Brewing. This is amazing. It is amazing. We're happy to be another addition uh, to the downtown Springfield landscape and be part of the overall craft beer conversation in Western Massachusetts. Well, I'm excited to see the place. You want to show us around? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on in, my friend. Uh, Welcome to the brew space. Yes, sir. It's stainless. This is where it all happens. The magic. Mike, meet Mike Yates, my business partner. Mike, head great brewer. to meet you. So how did you guys get your start in like this entire thing, the whole venture, you know? What Starts as an idea okay. and morphs into an actual brick and mortar location. Yeah. Well, let's continue this tour. Mike, it's great to meet you. So I'm assuming this is a canning machine? This is a canning machine. <laughs> but the cool thing, Mike, is listen, we wanted to create an optic for the consumer. And so optic. When, so when they come into the tap room, they uh -huh. get an opportunity to sit at the bar uh, and see all of the action taking place. We transfer from the platform, the brew deck, yeah. and we either package in 12 ounce cans or 16 ounce cans. It runs through the line, we'll yep. label it, we'll feed it, we'll package it, uh, and then some of it is also fed into kegs. So we have two different types of kegs, gotcha. uh, six tools and half kegs. Mike, come on, we'll show you where the uh, brew deck and how everything all takes right. place up here, okay. okay? Please do. So this is actually a continuation of our business model. Okay. We started brewing uh, six years ago under what's called the contract brewing model. So we would utilize other facilities to brew, package, and disseminate our beer. Okay. The model always incorporated or wanted to incorporate a true physical brick and mortar in downtown Springfield. Mr. Rayberry, thank you so much for having us here. Truly, authentically Western Mass. Appreciate and this you. is what it looks like. Thank you, man. In Springfield, Mass, on Albany Street, otherwise known as Gasoline Alley, you can find some of the best coffee in all of Western Mass. I'm here meeting Tim, right? Hey, Tim of Monsoon Roastery. How's it going, buddy? I'm good, Michael. How are you doing? Oh, man, this place is awesome. <laughs> I love coming here. This street, the creativity here, it's absolutely amazing. Tell us a little bit about this place. I started roasting at home back in 2013, trying to make coffee for a little bit better of a price for myself, yeah. uh, while also exploring, like, bigger, richer, like better coffees from around the world. So roasting at home, down the Main Street, Springfield, up here to Gasoline Alley, Albany Street. Totally. I can't wait to see you inside. Can we head inside? Let's go check all it right, out. We're gonna mask up because these guys are roasting coffee in there, all right? Let's do it. Oh man, look at this place. So this is this is the roasted coffee right here. So okay. we, we recently just switched to sustainable packaging here. So is sustainability a real thing for you guys? That's something you really delve into here? Oh yeah, it's, it's deep within our core. It's really what we're about here. You guys actually have the beans sitting back there. Yeah, come on, yeah. check this out. We get them straight from the port. Um, they're coming in. We usually like to buy coffees that have, have come through and been fresh in the port so that they haven't been sitting around or warehouse for too long. All right, so speaking of these beans, can you show me how you actually roast them? Absolutely. We started with our green coffee. Okay. And then we'll weigh it out into our into our bucket here before we get started okay and then it comes up into our roaster and these will cook in here almost like your popcorn popper like an air popcorn oh, yeah, popper you yeah. ever use one of those uh -huh. and it comes in a constant rotation so the beans are always floating and they're never stopping okay and that's what's going to get us a really nice even roast when the coffee's done it ends up coming into here put it into our bins and we're ready for processing So we're in the garden area here, and this is absolutely beautiful. So we wanted to make a safe environment where people felt comfortable coming to get coffee. You could get coffee and go if you needed to, or you could get coffee and come and stay and enjoy yourself, and people really like it, and it, it's just a convenient way for people to swing through and grab their gel. In Springfield, Massachusetts, at the X, there's a nice little restaurant called Pho Saigon where you can experience some really authentic Vietnamese food. Carissa, thank you so much for having us here. Tell me, how did you guys get started? When, who started this place? This is awesome. So we've been here almost 30 years now and the original wow. owner was Hai Nguyen. So your family adopted the, the, the restaurant from Hai? Yes, in 2008 our family along with another family, you know, took partnership. I feel like I'm in Vietnam. I've never been there, but I kind of feel like I'm here. Is that kind of the point of this? Yes. These chandeliers, what is this? 
Uh, so this is a nong la. Um, oftentimes, w women use it to keep shade. We have a Vespa here, and okay. we also have the sit low that a lot of folks used to use for transportation. I think I'm looking forward to, to seeing what you got going on from the kitchen, especially pho. Now, how do you properly say that word? Pho. So there's like a little swing going up, right? That's uh -huh. right, yeah. So you have quite the spread here for us today. I suppose we should just start with my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us so, yeah. so this is the Vietnamese pho, more particularly this is the um, pho rak bê, and it comes with all the different cuts of meat that we offer here. Um, here we have our sizzling catfish. Um, this is a more northern style dish. So these are fresh rolls. Um, these are nice and light. Um, it comes with shrimp and chicken and on the side we have like a peanut dipping sauce. And here? These are shrimp on sugar cane. Um, it's from Wei. And Did you say shrimp on sugar cane? Yes. What do we have here? Um, that's our beef skewers there. Mm. So it's thin pieces of beef wrapped around the onion and it's really, really packed with flavor. That one there is our egg rolls. And then last but definitely not least. Um, and then that's our shrimp cake there. It's very similar to the, um, the catfish here, the way in which you eat it and approach it. And for an extra jolt, you can have our iced coffee here. This so is iced coffee. Iced coffee. Carissa, thank you so much for having us here. This has been absolutely awesome. I'm looking forward to coming back and, and enjoying some more food here at Faux Saigon. We're here at Art for the Soul Gallery in downtown Springfield, inside of Tower Square. And we're here with Rosemary Tracy Woods. So Art for the Soul Gallery is what you see, this beautiful venue. It's the only black-owned art gallery in downtown Springfield. The current exhibition is... Um, Creative Quarantine, they wanted to just bring artists together, shut down for 30 days and create work. Where does this art come from? Does it all... All over the world. Like, what do you all mean all over the world? Actually, all over the world. Okay. And we have wonderful local artists. Frankie? Yes, how are oh, you doing? Oh, it is a pleasure to meet you. This is gorgeous. I'm actually colorblind. <laughs> what? What I wanted to do in this style was plain air. It abruptly cuts colors so that there's no blend to it. It's a big sister giving little brother sugarcane juice. Oh my gosh, I see it now. I heard a story about you. You gotta tell me if it's true or not. Someone says you were you were in a coma for for a while. I was riding a bicycle. A month later, I'm, I'm a, I was recovering, coming out of a coma. Funny enough, the damaged side is the right side. Okay. And that's the creative, the artistic side. Now, were you painting before this? I was not as much. Okay. I used to. I worked in medical for a long time. Oh, okay. I was in dentistry for years. It's okay, that's a big jump. Know. It could be creative, but yeah. not the same. No. And I hear you're doing murals too now. That started with the city of Springfield. Now, this one was in January, right? You said, yes. You said that something also went on in our political structure when you were doing this one. Yes, the whole layout changed because what I wanted to do here was more of a George Floyd unity oh, okay. kind of thing. That's yeah. why I had the hands clasped okay. like that. Then in the middle of this yep. came the state capitol riot. Art for the soul and it saved your life. It saved my life. Art saved my life. This has been awesome. Thank you so much, Tracy. <laughs> Chef Julie. Hello. How are you doing? Michael Grant, great to meet you. So how did you guys get your start and how long have you been here? So we opened up in October. Um, myself and my husband literally put in the floors and we painted. I love the decor you've got out there and, and the whole Springfield theme you got. Can you just explain like what's going on out there? So our decor is based on around our theme for the restaurant, which is uh, 1636, the year Springfield was founded. Okay. A lot of our images date back to 1902, so they're authentic images and you can kind of see and be like, oh, okay, I remember this area. Yeah. I didn't know it looked like that before. So let's talk about flavor a little bit because I saw some signs out there. Was it sweet? Savory and spicy. Okay. Our menu offers a little bit of everything. Our Caribbean jerk chicken definitely covers the spicy. Okay. It's a butterfly chicken breast marinated in jerk seasonings and then grilled. Curry mango shrimp gives you that sweet, curry savory taste. Curry mango shrimp, yes. wow. Fire grilled and then it's tossed in our curry mango sauce. And as far as savory, I uh, definitely the lamb chops are a go-to. I've heard a lot about the um, covered lobster tail. 
The deep fried lobster tail. Is yes, that what it is? That's one of our most popular. Please tell tell us all about this special. So the lobster tail is not your normal size that you would get anywhere else. We use eight ounce lobster tails. Okay. And then we deep fry them. The seasoning that goes on it is like a ten blend seasoning that we use, and then it's deep fried, and we top it off with our pineapple Hennessy glaze. So this really separates you from some other spots. Like you've got a niche and a place that you're really looking to serve people. Yes, we want to introduce some different flavors to the city. You always have your steak place, your burger place, yeah. your traditional staples. So we wanted to introduce something different and keep adding different elements to the menu that incorporate our philosophy. That sounds wonderful. Chef Julie, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you for having us. You are me. truly authentically Western Mass, and we appreciate you being downtown Springfield. Thank you, anytime. Oh yeah. We're here in Springfield, Mass. at Bumpy's. Bumpy, this is an awesome place, man. Great to meet you. Great to meet you, Michael. So is your actual name Bumpy? This is kind of cool. <laughs> my name is actually Daryl Gibbs. But oh, I, okay, I, okay. I got the name Bumpy from uh, years of football. Well, tell, tell us about Bumpy's, man. What is this plot? Well, um, I kind of wanted to create in this area um, healthy foods. Okay. Uh, so uh, people were not driving miles. It's mostly, for now, mm -hmm. dry goods. Okay. Uh, we're looking down the road to put in a coffee shop. We're looking to put oh. in a deli. Uh, and we wanted to, to make this like a landmark location mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, Springfield area. How long have you been in the grocery store business? I've been primarily in it for about uh, eight years now. Why fresh foods? Why in the world did you get into fresh foods? All of my buddies know that uh, when I was playing the sport, I had food allergies. The more that I learned about uh, my allergies and others that had allergies, uh, I, I, I would learn more, read more, and uh, I kind of went down that avenue uh, mm. in, in terms of helping more people. So tell me about some of these specialty products we were talking about earlier. What do you got going on here? Well, actually, Mike, we have a large variety of special products here. Okay. But my favorite is the uh, real turmeric kraut that we get out of Greenfield. Real turmeric kraut. That's one. The others is uh, on Elsie's. Um, crisp uh, cookies. Those oh, are okay. unbelievable. Like cookie crisp, like little thin crisp cookies? Yes, she's out of Belgiatown, Mass. And my last of my, my favorite is Emily's Grain Free. Okay. It's a granola and she makes it local. She's out of Longmeadow. Okay. What we want to kind of create here is a, a place that, and we learn a lot when the customers come in, we want to change lives. A lot of the customers come in with health issues and I have uh, a lot of my staff are trained in that area to help them out in those issues. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's the area that we're driven into and it's uh, ideally what we want to succeed in. Bumpy, thank you so much for doing that, man. You're so welcome. We appreciate you. Downtown Springfield, there's a brand new, awesome jazz lounge. We're here with Kenny Lumpkin. Kenny, Michael, yes. great to Pleas meet you. Pleasure to meet you, Michael. Why did you decide to open a jazz club? I have a true love for jazz, a uh, true love for music in general, and then it's a true love for hospitality. This community could use something like this, something where you can kind of come out, hang out, lounge, grab a bite to eat, yeah. a craft cocktail, and enjoy a live show. So I, I, I love that you're hosting and the jazz and the music, but I want to talk a little bit more about these craft cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit more. So you're saying you guys make everything in-house. Describe the process. Correct. So the only thing we don't make in-house are our sodas. I would love to introduce you to our bartender, Tim. You, sir, must be Tim. Is that I correct? Am. Tim, thank you for having us here. So the first thing we're going to make is a mojito. So first we start off with an ounce of lime juice. We do three quarters simple syrup. And then this is that super, super cool blanched mint syrup. Wow. Then we do two ounces of our rum. Wow. A little dance. <laughs> this is a cocktail on which you want to do what is called a double strain. Of course, no mojito is complete if you don't have fresh mint as the garnet. And when you slap your mint like that, that's what you call expressing. Oh, wow, that smells amazing. Yeah. Really, really Cheers, good. Cheers, my friend. Nice job. I'm going to do our super, super popular Billy's Holiday. It's our number one cocktail. Billy's Holiday, mm -hmm. okay. The Billy's Holiday is a combination of lemon juice, grenadine, lemoncello, and vodka. Wow. 
That's fantastic. We're gonna go old school for the last one and we're gonna do the classic. That's what it's called, a classic. The classic, which is Dewey's uh, play on a classic old fashioned. So first you're gonna start off with a quarter ounce of our brown sugar syrup. This is also made with cane sugar at a two to one ratio. Your muddler. You don't gotta go really crazy with it. Angostura bitters. You cannot make an old fashioned without Angostura bitters. Two ounces. And that's your old fashioned. There it is. <laughs> this has been awesome. Downtown Springfield, you can find hot oven cookies. And I don't just mean the name of the place, I mean actual hot oven cookies. Shayla, thank you so much for having us hey, here. Hey, how are you? Thanks for oh, coming. Oh man, I am great. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm gonna be a lot better once I get one of these cookies in me. What is this place? Hot Oven Cookies is a small batch artisanal cookie company, and we specialize in over a thousand flavors of funky, innovative flavors. So what we do is we produce one day a week, one or two days a week. We have the pucks, these are called pucks. Okay. So we just take the pucks, we put them in here, and we just kind of coat them. We have the okay. Always flavors, which are customer favorites. Okay. They've been customer favorites now for like five years. Okay. And then we have the Weeklies. We kept it simple so you know which is which. So I hear there's one other product like thing you've got going on that's kind of new. What, what is this? It's called our Take and Bake Dough. Basically, they can pre-order it, they can come into the store, and we just scoop it for them. Each pint is the equivalent of six of our our cookies. Oh. Five always flavors. They never go away. The dark chocolate and sea salt. Yes. The coquito snickerdoodle. Where was that? Coquito? Coquito snickerdoodle. The guava and cheese actually has become our most famous cookie. And then we have a peanut butter one. The strawberries in the oven. Yes. Um, we have one that's called the peachy roll. It tastes roll. like a cinnamon roll. And then the bottom is a brookie. It's my favorite. You said brookie? Kind of like a cho chocolate cake and a brownie had a baby, kind of sort of. That's what I tell oh. my customers. Okay. It's fluffy, it's soft, but it's crunchy around the edges. This is my first taste of go. a brookie. Here we go. I kind of agree with you. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of the flavor yet. I, uh... Part of our mission is like cookies and community, and it's remembering the community we're serving, right? So I grew up in the projects. And this business was actually hatched while I was sitting in a homeless shelter. So I created Hot Oven Cookies in different phases that would allow me to grow it on my own without depending on anybody else. So I want people to come in. I want them to have an experience. I love hearing success stories, you know? Yeah. People really just out there putting their hearts into things mm -hmm. and being for their community. Thank you so much for you're doing welcome. this. You're welcome. Shayla, you're awesome. I appreciate it. All Thank right. you for coming in. No, Thank these you. cookies are amazing. They give you a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm Michael Grant with Authentically Western Mass, and we will see you at the next one. I'm going to enjoy this cookie. See you guys. <laughs> that was <Thank> awesome. <laughs>